At KSMO Studios, time for our spotlight on the Salem Memorial District Hospital. And we have Terry Bruno with us this morning from SMDH Family Medicine. How you doing, Terry? I'm doing great this morning. Well, that's fantastic. We are glad to have you here. We've got a lot of things going on. It's a new month, getting ready for the warmer temperatures in spring. And yay! <laughs> yay. We're not yes. there yet, though. We no, no, we are days. not. Got a few more days, and hopefully, uh, look like next week though we might actually be hitting summertime temperatures, ninety by Tuesday. Yes, and then we'll be complaining. <laughs> yes, we, a little, but yes. probably not too much. But uh, we are here speaking with Terry. A number of different things I kind of wanted to touch on. We got some talking about some sports physicals coming up. We do know a lot of kids will be doing the camps and things of that nature this summer. So uh, we want to make sure we get that message out. But it is springtime, and as we all know, springtime means ticks they mean poison ivy they mean a number of different outdoor things allergies i'm sure you guys Seasonal have seen allergies. quite yes. a bit of that yes. don't let that just go by without getting some treatment you get poison ivy and you have that sticking around where it's blistering badly they need to come and see you don't they yes i mean for their comfort too yeah. i mean you always worry about secondary infection but you know, if you've had poison ivy anywhere and you're itching and can't sleep and you get really crabby. So, yeah, you might as well get it taken care of. It's a very simple fix, yeah. usually. It does leave scars if you decide you want to start scratching and yes. scratching and scratching. Because once you start and then the oils start, they spread more, don't they? Well, technically, the oil from the actual... Um, contact is what gets on your skin and causes the reaction but after that it's mm -hmm. not the oil anymore okay. the oil's gone but it, it's in your system right so you can break out places that you've never touched anything yeah. before so yeah. yeah that's the the interesting thing with contact dermatitis is what we call it from okay. anything that right. breaks you out and i have bad allergies to poison ivy and i have had poison ivy creep up on me in the winter two years later just a little spot just comes up because you're mentioning it's in your system yeah. and if there's a little Weakness, pop, there it, it comes. comes. And you're wondering, how did I get that little bump right there? And yes, sir, Bob, you, you scratch it and you're going to watch it just swell up a little bit. And exactly. Yeah, and even people who like heat with wood, you know, mm -hmm. you cut your, your wood and it's got poison ivy on it. You pick it up and you're touching, you know, so yeah. there you go again. Then other people who are very allergic to poison ivy, they're breathing that in. If you decide you think you want to burn that burn poison it. ivy, because right. that can affect people adversely as well, can't it? Yes, it can cause respiratory problems they wheeze not a good thing yeah. at all poison ivy is the easiest one to find but there's poison sumac and poison oak out there as well which are just as irritating right <laughs> as the other right. as, as the ivy so watch out for that allergens right now they're they're high aren't they yes they are and they start earlier it seems like uh, most people um even in december we're seeing cedar trees pollinate in december january um, February, and a lot of people start coming in with that, and they don't know what in the world's going mm -hmm. on. And uh, right now, it looks like the oak are doing their thing. I kind of looked out the window this morning, and there were all my oak trees kind of mm -hmm. doing their thing. Leaving a nice little yes. yellow hue yes. on your vehicle. <laughs> yes, and, you know, I don't, I don't watch TV to watch out for the mold count and all the other stuff that the weather people talk about, but you can tell just by people coming in. Their sure. eyes are watery, red. You know, some people think they have infections, and it's not really. It's a, it's allergies. And so. in this era of COVID, a lot more people are scared when they start to get these things because they, well, do I get a COVID test, or is it my allergies, or what is it? Well, then, when COVID first started, most patients came in and said, no, oh, this is just my allergies. Right. It's just my allergies. There were similar symptoms, you know. And, um, yeah, when you tell them, well, it's not allergies this time, it's COVID, but you're right. You'd have to have a COVID test yeah. for that. So. so if you have any doubts, get a COVID test. So, or if your allergies right. turn to fevers, you know, most well, right. of the time, you know, regular allergies don't make us have run high fevers and things like that. You can get a sore throat because you have a lot of drainage going down the back of your throat. But, you know, normally allergies don't make us real ill. Right. But they can lead our immune system to be poor, and we can pick up a bacterial infection easily. Absolutely. You know, so. you know one of the things that uh, from the report from the Dent County Health Center is the flu actually started popping back up here in Dent County. 
I guess, back in March. And so I think everybody thought, well, you know, we're kind of done with that season. And it seems like the flu season has gotten a little bit later as well, uh, February, March, and even into April now. Right, right. And that's why it's important to get your flu shot to help prevent that. You know, no no vaccine's 100%. Right. You can still get it, but usually you don't get it as bad um, as you would if you'd, you know, not had the flu yeah. shot. So, um I think it's it's important. I, I wish there was testing that was really, really inexpensive, that when people came in and thought they were ill, you could, you know, test them and know, okay, this is the flu, which mm-hmm. we do have that test, sure. but is it viral? Is it bacterial? Do we really need to treat it with antibiotics? That would be absolutely awesome. So if anybody out there is listening can make that happen, <laughs> that would be wonderful. You know, um, we had a, a test we used to use um, back – uh, probably the first of the year last year, called a BioFire, mm-hmm. um, five hundred dollars, and it would give us certain bacteria, sure. certain viruses. Um, but now we can't get it, so it's gone. So you know, we used it. <laughs> now it's not replaceable. So it really, it, it it makes it harder to diagnose what's going on with someone. But you go by symptoms and, you sure. know, physical exam. That's basically how you determine what's going on. And don't just assume it's going to go away. Yeah, right. Yeah. Do not. Because sometimes it gets worse. Yeah, it can get a lot worse. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to be compromised. And then, it, then maybe you aren't having an allergy uh, uh, symptoms at that time. Maybe it is a flu or something of that nature. Then, then the allergy starts kicking in. It just makes it five times worse, doesn't it? Right, right. Yeah. Seem a lot of sick. And kids, you know. Kids have allergies really, at times, really, really bad. Their poor noses run and run, and they just, they look like, you know, someone's beat them. They got the dark circles <laughs> under their eyes, and it's just, it's really hard on them, you know. And I think we probably inherit some of our allergies from our parents, sure. too. So, but it's, it's tough when you're a kid, because you can't really say everything that's going on with you. So, yeah. you know, if you're in doubt, bring them in. We'll be more than happy to take a look at them you know and it really is uh, uh important for you this time of year too to just kind of monitor yourself for ticks and if you're going to be out uh, chigger bites and things of that nature because a lot of times you get one you don't really notice it you scratch next thing you know well, watch out for infections because they can happen pretty quick can't they yes they can you know and we used to think that you had to have a tick on you at least 24 hours before you'd get any type of infection from it. Now we know that they can bite you and, and pull out and leave, and you never really know for sure that that mm-hmm. was a tick bite. So I think most people who are from here know that they have to do tick watching, sure. you know, and they they take it seriously. I just had my um, uh, son-in-law and my grandsons down here turkey hunting, and they got turkeys, which made them happy, but they're like, oh, my gosh, I got ticks on me. Um they're from Pennsylvania. They do have ticks. I asked them, I said, don't you have ticks? And they said, not like this. So <laughs> no. I'm like, well, you know, we grow them as a crop. So, yeah. yay. Yeah, Mitch Jane did a tick and snake report. So obviously we must have a lot of them. Yes, And yes. all different kinds of red button ticks and all those. <laughs> he just yeah. he just make up names. But, I mean, there, there are a bunch of them. And we don't want to, to, to slight anybody because tick bite can affect you in the long term for the rest of your life, can it? Yes, it can. Certain diseases can do that. Yeah. What is um, an issue for healthcare providers is that many insurances will not pay for a tick panel. Tick panels are not cheap. Um, they don't do them locally. They send them off um, mm-hmm. to other places to get them done. Um, and depending on when you got bit depends on if we're going to pick up any of the what we're looking for. So right. sometimes we have to repeat them. So, um, you know, it would be nice if insurances would be a little bit more helpful with things like that but a lot of times they won't do it if you didn't break out in that classic bullseye rash right they're not going to do it and then you're responsible yeah and then if you don't do it because you don't have the insurance then later on down the road all of a sudden rocky mountain spotted fever comes out and you don't know you're sick yeah Yeah. and and then it causes them a lot more yes and long yeah long acting problems from that too Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. well we never seem to get ahead of the game do we well, I think, you know, I think we, we now have at least knowledge. We, mm-hmm. we don't have anything that actually, I think, prevents a tick from biting you. But at least we know, you know, when we're outside, we need to look all over, you know, and when the seed ticks come that sure. are so tiny you can't even see them. Right. You know, so I think we should be a little bit 
more aware of ticks here. Right. You know, right. But, and, and people should also be aware of their pets with fleas and things of that nature. Because fleas, they bring them into your house. You may not see a couple of fleas get in your house, but if you let them go long enough, you will see a bunch of yes, fleas very yes. quickly. Yeah. And, you know, that's generally most people with fleas will see the, the bites on their ankles. You know, that's kind of classic, you mm. know. Um, and, you know, they're bothersome, but what happens is, you know, people are bad about scratching and then they get that staph infection right and there on. we go. Yeah. Yeah, so watch out for the fleas. Don't if you know your if your dog or your pet comes in and it's scratching all the time, wash it. See if you find some fleas. If you find fleas there, you're gonna find those those flea eggs will be probably in your home in somewhere. Your home. Exactly. And you want to get them eliminated as quickly as possible. I, I used to be in property management. And some we had an apartment complex, and this lady had a dog that had fleas, and she moved, and she didn't tell anybody. And for 30 days, that apartment was sitting there. The maintenance guy opened a door, and it was a cloud of fleas. It just opened. It looked like an explosion. Just fleas. Right. You know, and they're looking for a host fast. Yes. And they all they started to come at him. I mean, it was crazy. And he hit, hit, his pants were just coated in fleas. We actually got a hose out and just shot him down because there was no other way of getting them off. No. You wow. Know? So anyway, we had to call an exterminator, shut the door, and they went in there and bombed that thing. and. They said that was the worst flea infection ever seen. And who did it probably started with just about two or three fleas? Oh, I'm sure. And that's it. But, I'm sure. Uh, things that you uh, don't want to have happen in your home. You don't want that to happen because that's just, first off, very number one, uncomfortable. And then number two, if you're going to be going away for a couple of weeks, come back and have that infestation, it's going to be in everything. Fortunately, there was no furniture left in there. That they had taken, she had taken everything out. It was just a carpet and the walls. And I mean, wow. Goodness. Inside everything. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get a little bit off that and get to the, some sports physicals. And we do know that coming up next week, as a matter of fact, there's going to be some sports physicals, aren't there? Yes. May 9th through the 13th. <clears throat> Um, we recommend you call for an appointment, but if you know you get like some people like I do, and it's like, oh my gosh, last minute, um, I'm right here going, you know, past the hospital. Can I run in and see if I can get my kid a physical? Sure. We will do that. Sure. I mean, um, there should be no reason we're going to turn you away for a, a sports physical. And, you know, they are such a good idea because most of us don't do wellness exams for our children. And this is basically a wellness exam to see, mm -hmm. you know, how your child's doing and their growth and all the other things like blood pressure that none of us really think about much in kids. So it's a good time to get free, free things, you know, because well, sports physicals are good. Well, I think everybody should have a physical virtually once a year just as a precaution. You just never know, you know, if things start to break down slowly and they, they just don't happen over. Sometimes they do happen overnight, but for the most part, they don't normally happen overnight. You can kind of see the things coming on and, and, mobility, flexibility, different things, uh, your reaction time, different things are very, very important to you, just as a, a physical should be. You know, let the doctor check you out because you just never know when something's going to start creeping up. And if you get to it early, you can address it quick. Right. And you know what to look for. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's so many different things, you know, we inherit from our parents, um, you know, that creep up all of a sudden, like hypertension, high blood mm -hmm. pressure. You know, you, you may feel fine, but your blood pressure may not may be making your kidneys feel fine or mm -hmm. it's making your heart work a lot harder. And you really don't have the symptoms. You don't have the bad headaches and everything else. So without going in occasionally, you know, and getting things checked out, you're not going to know. And people talk about this thing called white coat hypertension, mm -hmm. which we used to blow off and say, oh, that's just because you're nervous when you come in to see your provider. And what it is, actually, anytime you get a little nervous, your blood pressure is hitting up high. Right. And that's not always a good thing, especially if your lifestyle, you're more nervous than you're not. Well, so, and, you know? and, and, and put that in perspective, Terry, somebody is making a lifestyle change. Let's say they, they now, uh, they've been married, they bought their house, and they think, that I'm comfortable, and all of a sudden, they're going to have a child. Well, all of a sudden, that child becomes, a, to say, twins. And then they get laid off from their job. And all of a sudden, the pressure and the pressure and the pressure just keeps going up. They think they're feeling fine, but actually, in, in reality, they may not be. Right. You're exactly right. And that all leads into the mental health aspect, mm -hmm. too. You know, that, um, you know, people, life is different than it was 
five, ten years ago even, you know, and, and there's a lot more stressors out there and a lot more things to be stressed about recently. So mm-hmm. it, it's, you know, most family practice and internal meds do do medication for mental health. Um, we work in conjunction with mental health providers too, sure. but, you know, do not think that your family doctor cannot help you out when things are out of your control, right. you know, so. And the neat thing about free physicals, and that's why I said free physicals, they don't cost you anything for your child if they're going to be participating in these camps or sports, is Misha actually has a two-year program, but Terry, I still believe every year, you know, there's not costing you anything. Go get that physical because you can get an injury one year. It may not really start affecting you till the next year. And if you don't address it for two years, you really could be having some problems. I agree. I agree. I think I agree with you that everybody probably should have a physical every year. And, and why not? If it's free to you, then mm-hmm. take advantage of it. Yeah, especially for the kids growing up because, you know, we, we and we, I think it's more and more I start hearing about these youngsters uh, having heart attacks at, at 13, 14, 15 years old and uh, doing sports or, uh, you know, right now with the concussion protocols that are out there, it, it's good that they have that. They take them away from the sport, trying to get them back to a baseline that they were at before. This is all very important because it, the long-term effect, I think, is what people forget about, isn't it? Right. Right, because sports are real important, you know, to children and to their parents and, in, you know, even in this town, sports are important. And mm-hmm. I, you know, I think it's a good thing, but sometimes you have to look at the long picture. You know, what's it going to do if we keep doing this injury over and over to the knee or to the ankle or whatever when I'm, you know, trying to get a job and I can't walk upstairs well because, you know, I've had two surgeries on my knee now. So, you know. But, you know, I think everything in moderation, but um, I think sports physicals are a good time to come in and talk and say, you know, um, if you are having, you know, problems with your back or whatever it is when you do a certain exercise or a certain uh, item, you know, you just talk and um, we'll let you know if that's a good thing or if we need to do something else. And, And let's be a little bit specific going to the youngster coming in for a physical they need to be open and honest, not only with their parents, but with the doctors as well. If you've got an ankle problem, if your foot hurts or something when you run, don't blow it off because the best time to get it addressed or at least discuss it with the doctor is the time of that physical. You may just be running wrong. You may have maybe a possibly broken bone you don't even know about. Uh, you don't want to just blow that off and say, well, it's nothing. I'll get over it. You have to be honest with yourself. It, if, so if you have to sit out three weeks now so you can play the rest of the year, isn't that a better option than getting in the middle of the season and suddenly finding out you can't play anymore? Right. Yes, it is. You know, and we're seeing a lot more MRIs in younger kids mm-hmm. because of injuries. And they're getting surgery because of injuries, you know. Um I don't know why that is exactly, except maybe they're just playing a lot more. I don't know. But, um, yeah, you know, I mean, I can remember when I first started out, I'd never MRI'd a kid, ever. Mm-hmm. I just didn't. And now it, that is not unusual to see what's going on in those knees or those joints or wherever it is they're hurting. So, Yeah, a lot of us played baseball on grass fields and did different things of that nature and ran on cinders. Now they've got all this new high-tech stuff, and I'm not sure it's always the better. You know, you see a lot of these youngsters – Not so much here in Salem where we still play on regular turf on a football field and baseball field. When you see a lot of these areas where they're they're doing artificial turf, artificial turf doesn't give. And so if you plant your foot to try and go after a ball or try and make that cut or whatever, um, the turf doesn't give, so something has to give, and it might be your knee, could be your ankle, or maybe a tendon. Correct. You're right. And, you know, we're lucky to have physical therapy there at the hospital, too, so that a lot of times, and, and people don't don't always agree, but a lot of times you can do physical therapy before you ever do that MRI and fix the issue, mm-hmm. you know, because partial tears will heal. Complete tears, no, but and physical therapy, when they do their evaluation, generally can pick those up pretty quick, and then we can let the insurance know, and then they let us do things, but... Um, 
A lot of times they will not let us do that MRI when we first have the injury. So oh, yeah, they want to see if there's they, a yeah. Are you going to get better yeah. on your own and so on? Yeah, there, there, sometimes there so. are some battles there that you oh. have to have Daily. to go through. Yeah, Daily. yeah. Well, that's that's. They've got their fighters, and we've we yeah. got ours, right? <laughs> exactly. You know, but let's let's get back to the free physical. Available May 9th to the thirteenth, I believe is what yes. you said. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. And our office hours are eight to six. Um, if you're really, really, really lucky, you might be able to come in at five fifty-five and beg for one. But <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, try and be there by five thirty. Yeah. You know, so. Um, and, and don't put it off. We get a lot of people who put it off to, like, practice has already started, and now they can't do anything because they mm. were supposed to get their physical and they forgot to do it. Right. So try and get it scheduled, yeah. you know. We all have cell phones. Put mm. it in there and get in and get it done. Seven two nine eight thousand is the number to call to schedule that appointment for the free physical for your youngin'. Uh, is there a – I mean, have to be a high school sports athlete? I think there's some requirements that they – have to be doing that and because I, I think it's got to be something. well yeah i think so I, yeah, i'm Maybe. pretty sure yeah because we have to fill out the paperwork right. the, so that's that's why i even have had um the homeschool children who are oh, going to sure. play sports so i mean they they qualified too so not a bad idea and while the youngins getting their physical maybe mom or dad whoever's bringing them should probably get one too <laughs> a two for one. Well, yeah, I mean, you're there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's my mom's old dad. It's while we're here, while maybe, we're here, um, let's yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> because really, it's not a bad idea to get a physical at any time. I know I used to get a physical every year, and I got a little bit lazy with that. Now it's usually about every two years. Um, but I, I realize the importance of getting that every year because okay, here's here was my my routine. I'd go to the. Um, go to the health fairs, I'd get my blood work done, then I'd go get my physical. So now the doctor could look at my blood work and check my physical and do all the physical things we need to do. And then they can say, okay, we, I, we need to keep our eye on this. Need to Maybe you need to cut back on this. Maybe you need to exercise a little bit more. Maybe try this type of exercise a little bit more. Suggestions there to try and keep whatever is under control that might be starting to edge up that's getting a little out of control. Right. Right. And, you know, um, we're all aging and things change when we age, even though we'd like to believe that that didn't happen. And I'm really not this old, but things change. You know, what we used to be able to do, we can't right. do. Is that a normal aging thing or is that something more important that something's happened? So, yes, getting physicals and and, um, you know, and and regular appointments you know a lot of people think oh, well i'll just can go i have high blood pressure i'll go once a year and that should be good enough but not always mm -hmm. you know because your blood pressure can go up or down or whatever during that year so a lot we, of factors happen during yeah, that year so we that you know things, highly recommend you come a little bit more often than once a year all right one last thing i wanted to point out because it is getting near spring and i know a lot of people are going to start getting active who have probably been pretty sedentary over the entire winter season and you haven't been able to get out lately and do much outside unless you're a fish so if you do plan on doing a softball maybe you're going to run maybe you want to do the 5k 10k before you do that, and if you have not been out and about doing anything and you haven't been exercising whatsoever, I highly recommend you do go get a physical before you get started. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it will help prevent some injuries um, and also make you a little bit more aware of what you probably should be doing instead mm -hmm. of, you know. Um, a lot of people think, when I'm going to start an exercise program, so I'm going to do 20 minutes on the treadmill every day when they probably would be okay to do five minutes the first day and for probably mm -hmm. for the first week and without you know injuring themselves but right. some people just think oh i can do that i used to do it i can do it now you well know? yeah we all used to yeah used to I could used to, a long yeah, time ago <clears throat> but you're right uh it's it's okay to feel sore but you don't want to be in pain right you know and there's a difference and, and people say well it hurts no matter what well no hurting and just being sore getting up because your muscles are a little haven't used those muscles in a while. Okay, that'll go away pretty quick as long as you continue to do what you just did. But, boy, if you do something out of the ordinary, I, was, I always remember the one time I went and cut wood. Oh, my gosh. You know, I'm thinking, oh, I'm in pretty good shape. I was 24 years old. I was in good shape. I'm out there cutting wood. I thought my shoulders are going to fall off the next day. I thought didn't feel a thing that day. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. those, I never <laughs> cut that much wood in my life. 
and I didn't move around very much for the next five days because I was in pain. Then you're taking over-the-counter medications, trying to get rid of that pain. You're taking your, your, your Tylenol and things of that nature. You don't always want to be doing all that stuff because you're putting, you're putting drugs into your system that you really didn't need to be doing if you just would have monitored what you did. Right. You know, but I think most of us are guilty for that. You <laughs> We're know, all guilty of it. You know, oh, I've got to get this done, so I'm just going to push through this. And then you realize that was not your best yeah. move. So if anybody has any questions about physicals and getting that set up, first off, just call 729-8000. If you've got a youngin that's going to be participating in summer camps, volleyball, baseball, softball, football, uh, cross-country, track, golf, any of those, you can get that free physical. It's required by Missouri State High School Activities Association. But, again, it's not required every year anymore. It's every two years. But get it done before those camps get started. And we're almost at the end of the school year, Terry. You know as well as I do, camps are going to get started in June. Right. Right. They are. And people are going to get more busy in the summer doing things with their kids. So, yeah, get it done now. Very good. 729-8000. And again, that's May 9th through the 13th to get those physicals set up. They don't cost you a thing for your child. Now, if you want to get one for yourself, there'll be a small charge. Um, but a lot of times, uh, some of the insurance companies, I know, I think Anthem has sent me one to go get a physical yeah, for free. quite a few do for free. And I tell patients that because a lot of them don't know that. You know, you're paying for your insurance, so take advantage of free. Mm -hmm. And usually... Not always, but usually they'll do blood, let you do blood work and things like that, too, for free. So, so if you have any questions, you can contact your insurance company. Oh, heck yeah. You know, and find out and ask them about their plan. Say, hey, I, I really don't need to go get a physical. Do I get this one free? Blah, blah, blah. And a lot of times you might even negotiate it. If they say, well, no, we can't offer that free. Well, you know, but I have this going on. I really don't. I want to get it nipped in the bud, as Barney would say. And sometimes they'll actually say, okay, go ahead. We'll, we'll get that one to you. So just make sure you do it within this time frame or let us know who you're going to be going to so we can get that approved and then wait for them to approve it now when they send you the approval go get your physical right right don't do it ahead of time <laughs> <laughs> you may not get that free yeah sometimes you have to wait a day or two or three some but uh, they'll usually get back to you pretty pretty quick or sometimes you have to call back and find out what happened and then uh, got lost in the shuffle but again doesn't hurt you to set up that appointment for your child. That's absolutely free. 729-8000. That's at the physician office building number three. That's where the SMDH yes. Family Medicine is on the campus of the hospital. And uh, they welcome you. If you. Even if you forget your appointment, come on in. It might take you a little longer to get in, but uh, don't don't fret. They'll, they'll get you in there. But don't yes. come at 558. <laughs> no, no. Not a good idea. They're open 8 to 6, Monday through Friday at SMDH Family Medicine. Terry, thank you for coming in. Well, thank you for having me. And spending some time with us. Talk a little bit about our spring here in the Ozarks and also about those physicals. We really do appreciate it and all the work that goes on at SMDH Family Medicine. You guys do a tremendous job. We thank you. Thank you. Came in here, Civic Happenings. They're next. <laughs> Has your physician ordered you an x-ray? What about a CT scan? Maybe an MRI? This is Bobby Sullins, radiology director at Salem Memorial District Hospital.